everyone. Uh, again, my name is Wes Purvis. Happy to be back on this last day of WLPC. So in this session, I want to talk about throughput, specifically the fallacy uh, around single client throughput and how it's a, uh, a, an unreasonable expectation of, of network, uh, of, of the capability of the network. So what is, what is the issue? The issue, in part, comes from vendors who put out you know, marketing like this, you know, this, this center one here, IT infrastructures entered a new era of 10G Wi-Fi connectivity. Right? This is from a, a legitimate press release uh, from a Wi-Fi vendor. And you know, the rest of these are kind of from spec sheets and you know, consumers are used to, you know, they, they buy their home Wi-Fi router based on the, the number, right? And, and the number, it typically rep represents the throughput, right? This is a AX11000 tri-band Wi-Fi 6 router, right? 10 gigabit Wi-Fi router. Um, you know, in, in the enterprise space, we're a little more practical. We only advertise kind of up to six gig, right? It's just not as bad. So let's, let's kind of take this apart. You know, what does six gigabits per second of, of throughput mean, right? Well, it's a combination of 2.4 and five gigahertz in the 2.4 band, it's you know 11AX, 1024 QAM, MCS11, four spatial streams at 40 megahertz. Seems reasonable. Uh, five gigahertz is is again 1024 QAM, MCS11, eight spatial streams, 160 megahertz. <coughs> so you know what what does this get us? That gets us about uh, 1.1 gigabit per second in five gig and 4.8 gigabit per second. In 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 five or 1.1 in, in 2.4 and 5.5 in 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 five gig. So, all right, let's say I want to do a speed test. What what should I actually expect? Well, I can only connect to one you know one radio at a time. So let's rule out 2.4. I'm going to connect on five gig, and I have a uh, I'm not I don't have it on me, but I have an iPhone, right? So an iPhone that's a, that's a two spatial stream device, and. Uh, you know, the company I work for happens to have a lot of Windows devices, and uh, Windows devices have an issue, or specifically Intel devices, have an issue where um, if they don't have a recent driver, they can't see Wi-Fi 6 SSIDs. So likely, I cannot turn on Wi-Fi 6 right now. It's just a reality. Um, so I'm going to have, you know, I, I'm going to use an 11 AC data rate, and you know, it's it's a it's a dense office, so I need to drop down to 20 megahertz. So. I get M8, two spatial streams. There's no M9 in, in two spatial stream world at 20 megahertz. And that drops my data rate down to 173 megabits per second, right? So what is, that's uh, you know, quite, quite the reduction. So let's take a look. What, is this, what does this 173 actually mean, right? Um, you know, 173, it's a data rate. Again, it's not actual throughput, right? Wi-Fi, you kind of get 50 to 80% throughput of the data rate. It really depends on what the, uh, you know, the aggregation capabilities of the client and a couple other things. So let's say, realistically, I can get 140 megabits per second of actual throughput, right? Again, a big, uh, a big uh, drop. But you have not looked closely enough. There's a star. This would not be a vendor presentation if there was not an asterisk, right? So um, this is uh, this is Lake Louise in uh, in Canada and in, in the Banff uh, National Park. It's a fantastic place to visit. Um, it's a very nice picture, isn't it? And that's kind of the world. It's a pic, you know, that's picture perfect. It's the best case throughput that you're going to get. But we live in the real world, where you have multiple clients. You're not always going to be you know, super close to the access point. So when, when somebody, you know, complains and says, oh, the, you know, the Wi-Fi is super slow. Well, first of all, what's slow? It's, it's all relative. You know, I'm only able to get 100 megabits per second. That seems pretty good. You know, all things considered. Now, there are some other things that kind of impact, uh, impact throughput, especially, uh, you, you know, single client throughput. One of them is, is TCP windowing. <coughs> This is, is something that I think gets overlooked quite a bit. And so what is, what, what is TCP windowing? Well, it's, it's how much data you can send before it needs to be acknowledged. And devices can have some pretty large window sizes nowadays, you, you know, up, up to a gig, beyond a gig of, of window size. 
But once you get over Wi-Fi, that can go down pretty quickly. Um, you know, here's a client that downshifted 87K down to 343 bytes uh, just in the course of a, of a speed test. Right, so this, this actually does happen. And you know, the reasons are, I think, pretty obvious. Um, there's two, two things that you know, kind of separate Wi-Fi from Ethernet. One of them is latency. Right, so it, it takes longer for clients to transmit. Right? They, they don't necessarily, I, I, when I have something to transmit, I can't always transmit right away. I have to wait for somebody else to transmit. Uh, and, and I have to contend for the medium. So we have uh, some timeout issues and, and some latency that affects the TCP window size. Second and probably more impactful is jitter, right? Jitter, um, you know, the, the variance of, in latency will cause, will cause issues as well. Now, sometimes it's not pronounced, um, but really when you're gonna notice these, these issues is when you have a couple clients, when you have, you know, mo multiple clients on, on the network and you're trying to run your speed test. So what is, you know, what's, what's kind of the solution or what, what is the, um, you know, workaround? And you'll see that almost every vendor, you know, speed test will, will use multiple TCP streams. It kind of gets around the TCP windowing issue um, because you're, you're sending multiple streams and it doesn't matter if one stream, uh, you know, drops its window size. And you can actually, if you're running a speed test, you can actually configure some of this. So if you do a, a fast.com test uh, and you wait for the test to finish and you go to the advanced options, you can configure how many parallel streams there are. Right? And so the default minimum is one, the default max is eight. And you could you know, put four and four and it'll always do four, you know, four streams and theoretically give you a little, bit, you know, a little bit better throughput. Same thing with iperf. If you use the dash P command, dash capital P, you can use multiple pairs. And speedtest.net, uh, actually seems to just use multiple streams uh, by itself. Right here's uh, four, four connections, four, four ports. Now this doesn't overcome the latency issue. Um, so this is why you'll typically see if you, if you run a speed test to like a WLAN Pi, you'll, your, your results are gonna be better than uh, like a speedtest.net type test. Even if you have a large internet uh, bandwidth, um, it's, it's just simply because of latency. So what is, what is the summary? <laughs> what is the point of this presentation? Uh, I think generally there's a misconception uh, around throughput, right? It's, it all starts with the really high uh, peak data rates that, that vendors advertise, uh, and it just goes downhill from there. Uh, users, um, general consumers expect you know, a large amount of throughput. And so when they see 100 megabit per second, 80 megabit per second, a lot of times that's not good enough. Um, it's pretty easy to manipulate throughput both good and bad, knowingly and unknowingly, right? So as a vendor, if I'm running a throughput test, I can make my numbers look good. As a consumer, if I'm running a throughput test, my numbers can look bad and I don't know why, right? It's, a lot of times it comes down to TCP. Um, and so another workaround is to use UDP, even though that's not that realistic. So uh, my argument here is, is really try to educate your users, and this is not always possible, but focus on what's, you know, what's actually necessary, um, what users actually need, and validate that the network can handle that, and you know, use actual applications instead of relying on speed test. All righty. Thank you.